Hey everyone, welcome to HNS Thickly. So, today we are going to talk about one of the important factors that affects the movement of the fluids across the membrane and that is osmolality. So, let's first understand what osmolality means. If we are taking, let's see, 1 kg of water and how many number of the solute particles are present here is known as the osmolality. Here we are concerned with kg, not with liters. If we will say that 1 liter of the water contains, uh, let's say, 36 num uh, particles of solute, then we won't call it osmolality, it will be osmolarity. But here we are taking into consideration the concentration of the water in terms of the weight, so it's known as the osmolality. Therefore, what we can say that if we will say we have two solutes, one has low molecular weight, other has the high molecular weight, which contributes more to the osmolality? It's the low molecular weight solutes that contribute more to the osmolality as compared to the higher molecular weight solutes. For example, we are taking just 10 grams of the particles. Here again, we are taking the 10 grams of the particles. But this is for the low molecular weight they will contribute more because the particle size will be small and more particles will be available that can exert the osmotic pressure if we will say about this 10 gram for the higher molecular weight solutes there the particle size will be more and the space will be the same as for this one so less particles will be accommodated here and less particles will exert less osmotic pressure Let's talk about the particles and first we will say that the particles can exist in two different forms. They can act individual in the form of the individual or they can be existing in the form of the ions. Let me give you an example for the individual one. Let's talk about the glucose. Glucose molecule will contribute as one particle. Whereas if we'll talk about the ions like NaCl, when it dissociates in water, it forms Na positive and Cl negative. After that, this Na will be Na positive will be individual particle, Cl negative will be individual particle. That means two particles are contributing towards the osmolality if they are in the form of the ions. Let's now see how the fluid movement occurs due to osmolality. Let's say this is one compartment and this is another compartment and here is the semipermeable membrane in between. Here are Here is the higher concentration of the solute present as compared to here is the low concentration of the solute. So dissolved particles here will exert osmotic pressure across the semipermeable membrane and due to this pressure the water will flow from low concentration this uh, dissolved solute to higher concentration a higher concentration of another compartment so this is how the flow of the water occurs let's now talk about our body what happens inside our body the osmotic pressure is same from icf and ecf here the osmotic pressure remains same because the concentration of the solute here is equivalent to the concentration of the solute here water concentration on both sides is equivalent and at that time when the ICF uh, is equivalent to ECF, we are talking about the osmotic pressure, then the osmolality is equal to 280 to 290 milliosmoles per kg. Osmoles are the units for the osmolality. Now, if any disturbance occurs in this osmolality then automatically what happens the water moves across the cell membrane so that it can compensate or equalize the osmolality on each side of the cell membrane and this thing should be noted down that when the osmotic pressure across the icf and the ecf is same that means solute concentration is same on the both sides as well as the water concentration is both so what happens there occurs no movement of the water because the osmotic pressure is the same when the disturbance occurs in this osmotic pressure only then there can occur the movement of the water across the semipermeable membrane let's see some more definitions of osmolality first definition is that it can be defined as the measure of concentration of dissolved particles in blood second definition we can say that it's the number of the osmoles in one kg of the water 
As I have told earlier that the unit for measurement of the osmolality is the osmol and one osmol may be defined as the amount of solute that when dissolved in water gives some osmotic pressure as that expected from the one mole of ideal non-ionized solute. For this definition just remember that in body fluids we calculate osmolality in terms of miller osmoles not directly in terms of osmoles. If you will see the adult reference range, it's between 275 to 295 milliosmoles per kg. So, we can say that if we measure the electrolytes in our blood, that can indicate us the osmolality in blood. Let's now see some formulas that can help us to calculate this osmolality. So, the concentration of Na positive into 2 is equal to the osmolality. This is the simplest formula and this formula can give us the rough approximation of the osmolality. Now, let's come to the complex one. This is the complicated formula. This is twice the concentration of the Na positive plus twice the concentration of the K positive plus concentration of urea and plus concentration of the glucose will give us the osmolality. But this formula is not valid when patients have elevated level of proteins at that time it's not valid or patient will have the elevated levels of the lipids in blood. And the second condition is that it's not also valid we can't use it when large amounts of the unmeasured low molecular weight solutes for example ethanol are present in the plasma. As we have discussed earlier that cell membrane is selectively permeable and it allows the movement of few solutes inside and out. But some solutes are neutral solutes that is they can freely move from this semi-permeable membrane. They are freely permeable. So example is the alcohol and the urea. Let's now see some examples in order to understand another term that's known as the tonosity and this we will discuss in the upcoming next video. First we will give you some examples. Let's say we have sodium and this sodium is responsible for increase in the plasma osmolality. Why there will be increase in the plasma osmolality? Because Na positive will exert some osmotic pressure that will lead to the movement of the water. Now, I will give you an example of the neutral solute. Let's talk about the urea. Here, an increase in the plasma osmolality due to urea doesn't have this effect because of the free permeability of the urea in ICF and the ECF. This leads to a concept of effective osmolality or we can say tonosity that we are going to discuss in our upcoming videos. Thank you.